Hello everybody, it is Eddie Speed, founder of Note School, and we have a really uh, interesting uh, training that we're going to do today because we're going to talk about something that really has morphed uh, over the years into analyzing what I believe are the most powerful niches in the note industry today. So I want to say hi to you. I'm thrilled that you're here. Um, and uh, we are going to have a good time with it. We're going to try to make our time uh, short but uh, powerful. So uh, I'm going to click off the video here. Just wanted to say hi to you. Really appreciate you being here. And uh, let's get started. Okay. One of the biggest things that... Uh, when I look at the industry overall, one of the biggest things as, as a trainer and a facilitator in this industry, one of the biggest things I look at as far as note school is concerned is we want you to feel comfortable in the fact that what we're teaching you how to do, we have a lot of experience doing. So just a quick little background about me. Um, I've been in the note business since 1980. I've been buying performing and non-performing notes. I have personally overseen closing about over 40,000 note transactions. Gosh, if I've closed 40, I probably looked at <laughs> I probably looked at 400,000 note transactions. Our executive team even has a bigger number than that because a lot of people on our executive team were people that I worked with that worked at the institutional level and uh, they're now with us, but uh, they were at institutions and they were closing, you know, a crazy amount of transactions for a lot of money and so they uh, they have closed literally our executive team combined has closed about three and a half billion dollars in discounted mortgages so pretty significant that we are uh, teaching you about a business that we have a heck of a lot of experience with so let me fast forward you to kind of where we are today and that's the six biggest niches and notes that you're going to see uh, in the market and I say for 2018 uh, so I'm going to go through these uh, quickly and kind of tie it together, kind of make the pie chart with it, and then we'll go back and break them down individually. So number one, buying property with seller financing. If you're in the real estate investing relating business, and that could be land, that could be uh, mobile home and land, that could be houses, that could, buy, that could be, you know, industrial property, that could be commercial, it could be really anything. I think probably the most underutilized strategy at all in real estate investing is is trying to buy the property when the when you get the seller to owner finance for you. So we'll take a we'll take a little deeper dive on that in a minute. But that, that's that's a highly underserved market. It's something that I actively do, and uh, I think the smartest operators in the business do pay attention to this. But I just don't think it's talked about much, and I think it's an opportunity for us to sort of beat this up today. Secondly is reperforming notes. Reperforming notes are typically loans that came from institutions and uh, they were rewritten, the customer is paying again, and now all of a sudden, what are we going to do with that? Well, we're going to get out there and figure out how to uh, 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 buy those notes from the institutions that are paying notes. Those loans are typically written at fairly low interest rates. So that means you're probably buying that loan at a pretty good discount. We'll take a we'll take a, a, a another crack at going over this here in a moment. Obviously, non-performing notes. Most of the non-performing notes that we're going to see in the marketplace are are what's called low price band, and that means that they're on houses secured on houses of less than a hundred thousand. Not every non-performing note is that, but some of the best buys are going to be in that. We'll talk about that and why as we progress. Retail seller financing, and what we mean by that is this is just an individual that sold a property. It could have been their personal home. It could have been 20 acres of land. It could have been a commercial property. It could have been a property related to a business that they used to own. But they, but they uh, owner financed a house. They don't, they don't create owner financing over and over and over. We'll talk about that niche in a moment. But they create an owner finance transaction, and we have a tremendous market niche to go pursue this. So uh, we'll we'll define the who's, what's, and how that works here in a moment. Okay. Then then we have the multi-note seller financer. These are these are typically real estate investors. They're either selling probably uh, working class houses, 
and working class could be a hundred thousand it could be as much as a hundred and fifty thousand uh, depending on the market or it could be land they could be uh, they could be uh, owner financing land tracks but they create notes on a recurring basis and to continue to do that business they need to have an exit strategy to sell that note so it produces an opportunity for you to buy those notes for you to even go find that customer and go cut a deal with them and then go find a funding source that'll pay you more than you're paying for the note you can earn fee income uh, in that manner so multi note seller finance transaction these are people that create more seller finance transactions you know more than one seller finance transaction they do it as a business model all right the last niche we're going to talk about is turnkey seller financing so the the rental market where an out-of-town investor buys a property and you owner finance it for them um, because a lot of reasons it's not going to really fit traditional financing at a bank it's it's fairly difficult if not extremely difficult to get consistent conventional financing on houses that are selling for less than seventy or eighty thousand dollars well now listen you may be in a market where there's tons of <laughs> there, there's no properties available under that amount or you may be in one of twenty states that that's a pretty common price point you know houses selling for forty fifty sixty thousand dollars that still make good rentals not they're not they're not high crime they're not they're not in the ghetto they're just in a lower price band market now you can do this business anywhere in the country so if you don't personally live in that market that doesn't mean you can't go utilize the opportunity we do turnkey deals all the time uh, that aren't here in Dallas Fort Worth where I live so uh, so we'll, we'll take this here in a minute and, and take a deeper dive on that all right so my question to you is what's your niche and I'm going to say that most of you on this training, you're, you can't check yes in the blank. I do all six of these niches. Now, I can say that we do, but, you know, we've got a company with a number of people, and I could say with all fairness, yeah, we, we, we do this, but it's not, uh, it's not that common uh, that a, a small operator could say, yes, I do all six, but I'm going to challenge you that one of these six niches that I've mentioned will fit what you're doing right now super well or will be an easy bolt on to what you're already doing. Okay? So I want you to start thinking in terms of your formulating in your mind how this can work for you. And this is clearly an introductory idea, and we're going to have a lot of opportunity as we progress this is going to be a this is going to be the start of a pretty significant series where we go through and say to you you could do this you could do this you could do it this way this might work for you this works in this market this works for people in a certain situation so it fits really everybody it fits people that just want to be note people it fits people that want to be a note broker it fits people that want to be real estate investors and really kind of think in terms of hey I'm my, my real core business is I'm a real estate investor all different people are going to come together in in one or or several of these niches okay so let's talk about low price band non-performing loans so when you see the the acronym NPL it stands for non-performing loans that's an industry term and it's something that if you read about the industry you'll frequently read about NPLs non-performing loans now the other category here is we've said low price band there's there's a ton of non-performing loans that's being re being sold in the market in fact within the last 12 months specifically there's been at least 20 billion dollars in non-performing notes that have been in the press so the trades that are big enough that the news uh, cycles like housing wire realty track ds news mortgage report all of these some of you these these are all free things that you can subscribe to they they frequently put out things and uh, you can read in there on a on a almost a weekly basis. Oh, you know, Fannie Mae just sold this trade for 120 billion 120 million dollars. Blah blah blah. And and so these are all common transactions. What historically happens in our industry is 
that a bigger trade is made and sold to a probably a big capital firm or you'll hear us refer to it as a hedge fund right and they'll they'll buy a big trade and then there's a subset of those loans that they turn around and resell in the market and they usually sell it to an investment group like ours like we have a capital fund and we'll go buy a package of non-performing notes so buy we'll buy a hundred sometimes we'll buy 300 sometimes, sometimes we'll buy a package of 25 or 30, but we're buying them in bulk from a bigger trader. And then what we do is we're in a position to resell those loans literally to investors on a, literally on a one-off basis. And so the importance of that and understanding that is that this is for you, uh, it's a way to, to, to re, to, for the resale cost of these properties to stay at a really low basis. If you're buying fix and flip houses right now, I know what your trouble is. You don't have a lot of inventory and the price you're having to pay for them is really high. That's a market condition. I can't fix that. It's a market condition. These non-performing loans are traded at 30 to 65 percent of the property value compared to you're probably paying 80 cents of property value. Sometimes 95 cents of property value. So this is a much lower way uh, to, to, to end up with a much lower cost basis in the asset. So you're buying the non-performing loan versus buying the property itself. And then obviously you want to do some workout strategy. So it, no, no clear way about it. This is the last frontier of distressed property uh, pricing. There is, th th this is, this is the inventory that's still uh, at a, that traded at a very value buy price. Fix and flip properties today is a hot topic and they're doing TV shows about it and this and that and whatever. But I participate in a lot of uh, brain trust mastermind groups with real estate investors and they're struggling with inventory. They can't find it. And there's plenty of non-performing loans to be found. And then secondly, it's price and these assets are much cheaper. So this is a great offshoot for a real estate investor that's just struggling with how to go find, you know, properties at a lower price. And obviously you've got options when you do it with them because uh, you uh, can modify the loan and get them paying again. You can, uh, uh, you can get the customer that's maybe abandoned the house to deed it over to you so you don't have to go through a foreclosure process or you can go through the foreclosure process and obviously note school addresses this at a, a long deep level and once again I'm, I'm just giving you guys a big picture today I'm not trying to take a super deep dive on any of these topics uh, but we are going to take a deep dive on these topics so once again I'm kind of baiting the hook today to say these are the things that we see in the market that that we're doing and that students are doing really successfully now i'm going to make a statement to you okay when you buy these assets outside of your market we are going to teach you how to exit these properties other ways other than just calling a traditional local realtor okay so when I say you must have a better strategy than calling a local realtor, it's because the local realtor will typically not be selling these low price band assets at what I call full retail value. So th there's a lot to be said on this subject and how we do it and how the mechanics work, but uh, we are going to show you strategies as we progress and say and how to not be reliant on a local realtor. So I'm not making any statements here today that we're not going to be able to fully help you with and show you things that we actively do or other successful students actively do literally every day uh, to, to sell property and get the most money for it. All right, now let's talk about retail seller financing. So a market condition happened that was very unique and that market condition is pretty simple. This market condition that that happened to us was that for about five or six years after the mortgage debacle, 50% of the people that made a mortgage application were turned down. So credit was really, really tight. It was very hard to get a conventional mortgage. Okay. In that same era, there wasn't the, the funding available to fund seller finance notes. 
So, so as a result of that, there wasn't a lot of people out there chasing buying one-off seller finance notes. So back in the 90s and the early 2000s, it was really a hot business and people were getting, in fact, I'll tell you this, in the 1990s, people that owned an owner finance note, literally in their mailbox in a month, might get 30 to 50 solicitation letters. These were primarily from note brokers and they were selling them to funding sources like us. So that was a hot market and everybody was chasing it. And even back then, the good operators were, were doing okay. Today, there may be one or two letters in a mailbox in the most aggressive market, a market that would have been seriously 50 solicitation letters, you know, in the 1990s, they might get one or two today. You might have a, you might be mailing in a market where they get no solicitation letters. So, this is a highly underserved market and this is some great business. As we progress in this, I'm going to show you case studies. So as we progress in, in some of this continual training that we keep referring to, I'm going to show you case study after case study of deals that we bought that came from people chasing this market, mainly people that were note brokers. And uh, they earn really good fee income. These There's a huge pile of these seller finance notes that are unharvested. And the reason they're not harvested is because, you know, for, well, the reason there's a pile of them is because for many years, the conventional financing wasn't easily available. And so a lot of people opted to seller finance their property. That tells you why they needed to seller finance. And then secondly, because we went through, through a period where there wasn't a lot of secondary money to fund seller finance transactions, note brokers just lack funding sources. So when they lack funding sources, they had to go, uh, they just couldn't go pursue that business opportunity. Today, there's money available and there's a ton of inventory available. And I've been doing this business of buying seller finance notes like this li literally since I started in 1980. And I can tell you, I've never been more excited about what the opportunities are. So this could be assets that you buy for yourself. It could be assets that you, you broker and sell to another investor. It could be assets where you buy it and then maybe sell, you know, a cash flow of the note to recoup your investment and do a retirement account strategy. So as we progress, I'm going to show you all kind of cool things as you can do. So if you've never seen this before, you're like, well, how do I find these guys? And what is it going to look like when they show me a deal? Well, the, the, the most common method is direct mail. And we have dropped over 5 million pieces of direct mail to people that own a retail owner finance note, right? Just like we're talking about here. So we have a ton of experience in showing you what we learned and how to get a list, how to mail the letter, what kind of letter it needs to be, how many you mail. And then once again, how's the cycle work when the customer calls you up and says, hey, I want to sell my loan right? It's, there's a selling cycle to that. And we've become very practiced at this. We have a ton of experience with it. So as we progress, we're going to show you exactly what we learned literally over the past over 30 years and how to do this. And the loans that they've, the properties they've owned or financed, what are they? Well, they could be houses. It could be land. It could be light commercial. And we're going to show you specific examples of transactions we've closed this year and what these properties look like. This is a very good piece of business that is not pursued heavily in the market. So I'm, I'm gonna encourage some of you that this is a great bolt on to what you're doing right now is to add this to your business. And I guarantee you, you're gonna like the result of what you see. All right, turnkey seller financing. So if you don't know what a turnkey property is, it's a rental property that's sold to traditionally an out-of-town investor and it's all done for them okay meaning that the house is already rehabbed the tenant is already in place the, ma the, the the property management is already in place and an investor in California can easily own a property in Memphis or Birmingham or Buffalo New York it doesn't matter because all the things that it means that they need to be a landlord boots on the ground they don't have to go do okay there is a gigantic market void in the market. And that market void is because you see uh, uh, the lack of conventional lending in low price band property. So if a property is under 100,000, 
that property is dominated today by by tenants. It's not dominated by or properties that have been sold certainly in the last 10 years. That property has been sold to to uh, investors using them as rental property. They haven't been sold to consumers. Well, why is that true? There's a lack of financing. So investors have typically been paying cash for these houses. And if you look around, and most of you have heard of many operators. It could be Memphis, or it could be Kansas City, or it could be Phoenix, or it could be Atlanta. It could be a, just a ton of markets that you've heard of somebody that had bus tour properties or turnkey properties. They, they call them different things, but it's really all the same, right? It allows an out-of-town investor to own a property with no work on their own behalf. There, there's a ton of operators here in Dallas Fort Worth that do it. Now, so there's some so I believe some of the smartest operators in the business have shifted over and been a turnkey provider. So as a result of that, what I found is if you're at a certain price point, then the, there's plenty of easy bank financing available, right? If you're at a lower price point, there's not really bank financing available, and that's where the seller finance opportunity comes in. Now, this is a formula that we've developed and critiqued and reviewed a ton over the last uh, couple of years. So this is a technique that I believe nobody else is teaching. And as we progress to this niche, a lot of you are going to find out this might be a great way for you to reposition some of your real estate investing strategies or some of the existing rental properties that you have or somebody else that has existing rental property that might want to, you know, turn their money over and go sell their, their rental portfolio. So there is, there's just like in the last category, there's fee income that's available. There's, there is uh, an ability to, for you to go buy a house and, and, and go then turn it into a turnkey property. And we've broken down all the components of what that's going to look like for you so that you know every step along the way. Um, and I'm not saying every candidate is a seller finance candidate, but I'm saying to you that when we show you some examples of what is a good seller finance candidate, you'll be amazed. You can do this on real estate outside of your market very easily. And once again, you kind of just have to right now, if you've not, you've not seen this, I appreciate the fact that you're just going to have to embrace the idea. Note School is going to show me how they do this on properties that are 2,000 miles away from them. And when you see how this works, I think you'll see it's, uh, it's just, we've just connected the dots that most small investors have not been able to connect uh, so that we can help show you how to be a turnkey provider, even if you don't do hundreds or properties a year. Okay. It is a great deal for an out-of-town investor. And uh, so there's certain markets that I like. Uh, the Rust Belt, as it's referred to it, that'd be Michigan, Indiana, Ohio. Uh, and, and those are terrific markets where the rental income can be $800 or $900 or $1,000 on a property that you can go buy today for Thirty-five to fifty-five thousand, and then go resell those properties as a turnkey property with owner financing, and go sell them and make a terrific uh, margin in your profit. You'll end up with you can structure the deals to where you really end up with owning a note, and you're in a position yourself where you can own a note and have no money invested in the note. So those are those are things if if. Uh, if you've never thought about this, then those are some things that you can expect that we're going to continue to show you. This is, these are the specifics, exactly how this works and why. These investors typically will pay a large down payment, and you can end up with a note that's fully paid out to the investor from the rental income. Uh, you can have a property that's fully paid out uh, in five or six years. So the investor likes it because they have a short-term debt and not a long-term debt. They're willing to pay a big down payment. And we'll show you investors that have already been buying these kind of properties and how to market to those kind of investors. So as we progress and start breaking this down, we're going to show you some very specific strategies that are going to help you in this regard. Okay. Multi-note seller financing. This is a highly underserved market. 
and this is where a real estate investor would create seller financing. They would create seller financing if they had a recipe and they knew how to do it correctly. So we we help you with the recipe so you could work with seller people seller financing property and show them if you create an owner finance note, it would need to have this customer. It would need to have this down payment. It would need to have these terms of the loan. Here's the process you need to go through. Here's the Here's how you do a loan, write a loan compliantly and legally. Here's the vendor network that you need to process in there. And what you're going to find is, is there is a jag, it, even today, uh, about 30% of people that make a mortgage application are turned down. Now, let me ask you a question. People that would have gotten an FHA loan or a Fannie Mae loan or whatever, do you think every one of those people don't? Uh, wouldn't be a good payer on a property just because they didn't meet that standard. And here's the other thing. The way that the lending restrictions are today, uh, they limit the fees that a lender can charge. So most lenders, this is a general statement, but it's generally true. Most lenders won't make loans under about $75,000. Okay, so there's a lot of owner finance opportunity on some lower uh, priced band properties that are in good neighborhoods, good payers, and they just don't have a choice to get financing. So there's some great opportunities in market niches. And uh, the goal is, is you're helping a real estate investor because you're showing them how to go create seller finance notes correctly and safely, and then they can go sell their paper. And you can be involved in that transaction, or you can be the real estate investor that creates the paper. You can be you can be a middleman facilitator, or you can be the operator that's the real estate investor, and now you've got a completely different strategy to go sell your property. We pioneered this idea in the 1990s. I was fortunate enough to meet a, a guy that founded Homevestors, and that guy's name was Ken D'Angelo, and I was his note guy. So I developed the whole note system that Homevestors used all through the 1990s, and it exactly worked the way I just described to you. So, so Homevestor franchisee would um, create owner financing, they would sell their property, and uh, then they knew that they could sell that note, and we were that note buyer. And so I really uh, broke that down and broke it into a lot of nuts and bolts, literally starting in about 1991. And, um, and then that comeback of that market has come back really strong. And as we progress, we'll show you exactly why that there was a market void and that really wasn't common for a period of time. And now it has become super common again. So as we progress, all the mechanics of why there's an inventory and why there's a source of capital out there that's looking to fund this type of business is in existence today and hasn't always been, but it's a it's a hot opportunity today. What This is probably, of the six niches in notes, honestly, this is probably the single biggest niche that people aren't pursuing today, and they should be. The good thing about this is this is a recurring customer. Um, it's pretty cool when you have a customer that you spend some time with and develop, and they could produce 50 transactions in a single year bringing you the business over and over and over. It could be 150 transactions a year. And so I like this business really well because once I developed a rapport and a relationship with the customer, it just kept it kept giving me a deal and another deal and another deal over and over and over. So I really like this model for that reason. Okay. Buying property with seller financing. This is a underused scenario because most real estate investors always think in terms of I'm going to give you cash for your house because we always think that that's all they want is cash. Hey, sometimes they want price. Any of you ever lost a deal because the price you were offering the customer for their house wasn't a price they were willing to accept? They would have happily taken payments over time but they were stuck on a price. I'll be glad to overpay for a property if you let me pick the terms. So we have done this a lot. Uh, we've done it on residential houses. We've done it on some commercial. I've done it on land. Uh, and so as we progress in, in note schools model, you're going to see a terrific 
opportunity and what that could look like in different ways. Typically, these are the, the owner finance notes that they're carrying for you. They write them at literally 0% interest or a very low interest rate, 1% or 2% interest. Now, you think they won't do it, but I'll assure you that they will. Some people are more stuck on price than they are on anything else, and you should always make an offer on a, on a free and clear property or a property that has a lot of equity in it. You should always make a, a an offer for them to own or finance for you, but it's not commonly taught. And so we want to make sure that we show you some techniques that we've seen because we bought so many notes. We've seen a lot of people out there that did this a lot. And obviously I've done it a lot myself and I love doing it. And uh, you, you carry the paper as long a term as you can agree to it. And there's some techniques that we can show you to, to appeal to people as to why they're willing to carry the, the, the term, uh, for a longer amount because you're going you can get more money. You pick. You want me to pay you a hundred thousand for the property or eighty thousand or sixty thousand. You pick and you let me pick the terms and I'll we'll structure something that makes sense for you. I've got some great case studies on this. The other thing is 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 when you structure this deal, you write in the agreement that you can replace the collateral. So you can replace it with like kind property. So if you structure a zero interest rate 30 year note, if you want to go sell that property in two or three years, don't go pay off that 0% note. Just go move it to another property and you write it right in the paperwork where, where they can't unreasonably withhold replacing it. So you structure the paperwork in a, in a way that allows you. I've done land deals where I've got them to release acreage based on the down payment that I gave them. So there's all kind of possibilities of how you can structure it, and we're going to show you specific examples that'll be very prompting into the creative juices of what that could look like and what that could do for you. What about the down payment? Well, you could extend that. You could you could extend the down payment out uh, and 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 make it a swap. You could swap something other than cash for the down payment. You could change when the first payments do. Instead of making the first payment due 30 days from closing, you can make the first payment due six months from closing or two years from closing. There's all kinds of things that you can do, and we'll give you some great examples of that. I've, I've seen some terrific deals that were made of swapping people down payment other than, other than money itself. All right, so let's round it out here. Number six is going to be re-performing notes. And what is a re-performing note? Well, at one time, this was a non-performing note. It's typically owned by a big bank or an institution. They've now modified the loan and the loan is paying again. So they have a successful payment history where they're making payments again. And um, many times this is written at a very low interest rate. Now, most people think the low interest rate is negative. Oh, I don't want to buy a low interest rate note. <laughs> you do because you're going to buy that note at a bigger discount. And then you have the potential, because most of these loans are written payable over 30 or more years, sometimes 40 years, that loan's going to pay off early. And when you get that early payoff, you're going to earn all that discount earlier than you thought you were going to earn it as it paid out over the next 40 years. And so we'll show you some examples of this, but this can be some terrific uh, property. Uh, you're buying the note, but the collateral is very nice, and it's just this niche market that most people don't know about. Re performing notes and we'll talk more about that as we progress. So the niches in notes, well, we're going to talk about all of these niches in notes and all the opportunities related to this. And I wanted to leave you with understanding that I prompted you with some great possibilities today, but I'm getting you ready for some training that we're going to be offering you where you can learn a ton of stuff at a deep dive about every one of these things. So I want you to make some notes on this. Feel free to feel free to uh, send us some communication on this. It's real simple. You can go to info at noteschool.com. You could ask us some questions that you'd like for us to address in future training or, hey, I'd like to Talk somebody. I think I may have an opportunity here on this or that, and we'll, we'll be glad to have somebody call you back. But I wanted to leave you with, this is going to be Note School's focus this year. Now you say, my goodness, Eddie, six things. How can you focus? We're going to show you how to break these niches down into a focus niche that'll fit you or how you might tie two or three of these transactions together that would fit your situation. So um, I'm very excited about where we're going to be. 
uh, in 2018 and how we're going to pursue these things. And I'm telling you, write it down, be checking your emails. We're going to have some terrific uh, training that's going to be some deep dives on these things. We, we are going to have a, a virtual class, which is a brand new thing for Note School, and we're going to have a virtual class where we're going to be able to spend some time at a deep dive and go through uh, what these things look like. So um, this is this is fun. I, I I hope you get the flavor that uh, that I'm excited about this because I am, and I'm excited about what we're going to show you and how you're going to be able to change and add to your business. So uh, you guys have a great end of the year, and I am going to look forward to uh, having and participating in some of this training with you as we progress. And uh, all of our staff, Kevin Shortell and Joe Varnador, and all the guys that are out there regularly speaking and teaching on this subject, we're all very excited about making uh, some uh, very clear uh, roads so you can see how this works for you in each one of these niches. See you later. Thank you.